Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is going to be just a quick and easy way to repair your 7.4 volt lithium polymer batteries. If you did have a short, for example, the way I got this short was trying to put this JST connector on and I accidentally um, touched the positive and negative together very briefly, had a spark and in these batteries there's a circuit board in between here and one of the chips will blow in the circuit board and it will break the circuit and you'll think your battery is completely gone but um, as a matter of fact it's just that that little chip is blown and so far I figured out a way just to cut it open bypass the chip this is a two cell 7.4 volt lipo pack from a JJRC H8C quadcopter. You just want to going to want to be careful because this is this does have the potential to spark blow up. So you're, you're just going to want to be careful with this and do it at your own risk. Anyway, so you cut this little um, this yellow yellow band here, and you just kind of peel it off there. Secondly, what I do is there should be a joint in the tape they put on here at the bottom in this case and you just peel this tape away. And then there's going to be these little cardboard guards here for the top and bottom. And that's mainly just to, to guard this these solder points here. <laughs> Okay, so once you get the tape off, you just pull this cardboard off very carefully. You're going to want to put this on the side and save it for later. The tape, you could either save it or throw it away. In this case, this one came off pretty nicely, so I'm going to probably save it and put it back on when I'm all done. Here we go. Here is the battery with that little circuit board I was talking about. And you can see the solder points on there. You've got these are in series, so you've got a, and then you've got a negative and a positive over here. And between the negative and the positive, that's where all the circuitry flows through. And then once you connect your, your quadcopter or whatever RC you have, um, that's how you get the joint connection here for 7.4 volts. These are 3.7 volt um, LiPo packs a piece, and then together in series, they'll equal 7.4 volts. So Next up, you're just going to want to pry these apart. They're a little tough. They've got some pretty sticky stuff. Just kind of slowly pry them from the bottom up. Um, you want to leave the top connected because that's where the uh, the connections are all kind of built in. You don't want to you don't want to bend those too much. Once you kind of get it separated, you're going to have this little pad. If you remove this pad, we'll be putting this back in later. You can see one side's sticky, one side's not. Just set that aside, sticky side up. And what you're going to see, this little circuit board. And in the circuit board, you're going to see specifically this little chip right here. Let's see if we can get that to focus. <clears throat> this little chip right here and that's the one that burns out when you short your two wires together by accident so that's the that's the chip we want to bypass and it's really easy um, you actually don't need to do anything with the bottom side here you flip it over and all we're going to be doing is soldering across these two this is basically all the circuitry flows from from that negative point to that negative point and so once we join those two it'll just kind of be negative to positive there and then negative and positive there and then the plug is what joins these two into one continuous circuit so you get your soldering iron get that guy hot. I'm going to put this down for a second. I use a little bit of flux. I use this pa this flux paste. Um, you can get it at any hardware store. It's just to kind of help the solder stick. Just kind of heat up the end of your soldering 
soldering wire just a tad. And you see how I got a drop of solder right here on the soldering iron? All you're going to want to do is join these two very carefully together. And at first it might not want to bridge the gap. I guess you could also bridge it with a little bit of wire, but I'm just going to build up a little more solder on there. The easy way, I guess. I'm going to get a little another little glob on there. And then I'm just going to try and bridge that gap just like that. So you can see how I bridge it. It's not very pretty, but it does the job and you just want to make sure it's not touching anything except going straight across on those two points. Just like that. There we go. Okay. If you got a voltmeter, we should be reading around. Um, I'm not sure what this battery's charged at, but you want to be reading around 8 volts and fully charged. So we're at 7.58, so the battery's still good. And instead of throwing it away, I just saved the battery. Um, like I said before, it's not going to have that balance function that this board does. It's just bypassing this entire board basically. But you know these are cheap batteries anyway and instead of throwing it away or ordering this board, I don't even know how much they cost, but um, you might not get the same amount of life from if you did do it the right way with a new board in there, but I don't really care. It's just for a little mini toy quad crop copter. So anyway, just put this little pad back in like so the sticky side facing up like this right in the center and then all you do is push these two batteries back together and there is that sticky tape on on the inside of these batteries so they will stick together really nice and tight and we saved, actually what I'd like to do before I do any of that, before I put that back together, is just test the voltage at the connector. Just to make sure it's that same voltage. And you want to be really careful here not to touch these two together. So let's see what voltage we get. Yep, there we are, 7.58. So this battery is, you know, it's probably half charged and this battery was actually um, purchased after I got the quadcopter and it wasn't even used I just shorted it out by putting on this JST connector before I even used it and I was kinda bummed but just pulled this apart and figured out that there's a way to save it so you just put this little cardboard piece you took off just push it back on nice and evenly uh, over the top and then try and push it onto the sides and use that sticky residue that's still on there to kind of um, let it bite back on the battery and stay there. And if you decide to save this tape, you basically just take put it back on just like you took it off. Put the cardboard on the bottom. Kind of pull it tight as you wrap it back around the top over that cardboard and wrap it all the way back around nice and tight to the bottom now it seems like this stuff lost a little bit of its stickiness but it seems okay what I did with the other battery is I just um, put a piece of this scotch tape around it you're not really adding any weight at all um, so I think it's not going to affect the weight of your mini, but just go ahead and just for s good measure, I would just put another piece of, um, scotch tape nice and tight all the way around it and make sure it's pushed on there solid. 
And there you go. You just repaired your 7.4 volt 2S mini quadcopter or other RC type of RC battery pack for no charge and you didn't have to throw it away and buy a new one. Thanks for watching guys. More to come.